a hypocrite, in my honest opinion. He really was. I didn't find anything about him to be healing. He insulted uh, African-American women on a consistent basis. Uh, one of his last statements that uh, he said was that if you're over 38 and you haven't married or something like that, that you're no good and disposable. Um, to me, it was a shock jock. And, you know, I, I hope this is teaching folks a lesson about the karma that you put out, the negativity that you put out in the world, that when karma comes knocking at your door, she might not be so kind. So, you mm -hmm. know, the fact that he uh, killed over real quick and was uh, supposedly with a woman that we don't- Shout out to Instagram. Ladies, if you are over the age of 35 in the United States of America, that officially makes you a leftover woman. Danger zone! 27 to 35 is the danger zone. That's when you need to focus like a laser on the outcomes you want. But if you have made it to 35 years old and you're unmarried, you are a leftover woman. You are what is left. Men know that there's something likely wrong with you. Whether you want to hear it or not, I'm going to just go there with you. I'm telling you the truth that you don't want to hear. Men know that there's something likely wrong with you, but you cannot be fit in an adjustable six or higher, 35 unmarried, something wrong with you. That's where men are automatically coming at it. And here's the thing. Just like when you were between the ages of 18 and uh, 25 and you didn't want to settle, you were trying to get the CEO, the pilot, the investment banker, you were trying to get flued out, you were trying to do, because trust me, when I would do my focus groups, I've already talked about the focus groups, they are doing wonderfully, by the way. Atlanta, the men in Atlanta have showed up big. I have over, like I said, I have over 30 men in Atlanta, single, unmarried, childless, over six figures that have already showed up. I'm going to have to have more focus groups in Atlanta. The Atlanta Women's Focus Group, it's full, but I'm going to have two backup spots. All right. New York Focus Group and LA Focus Groups are getting full. So these are going to work out really well. Women 27, and you must follow the instructions. If you don't follow the instructions, I'm not even responding. Um, and you must attend. You have to attend in person. Not Zoom call. You got to come out and show up. We've done enough online. We got to get in the, in, the, in the field where the work is real. But let's go into it. If you are over 35, ladies, you've had your you've had your time. And now what it is is it's the men's time. Now there's a notion that, that men over uh, over a certain age don't want to get uh, don't want a serious relationship. That's not true. The thing is, ladies, you you ladies want a lifestyle. You want a man that can afford a Ruth Chris Mastro's Highland Park Midtown Bughead Plano uh, Frisco lifestyle. You want a guy who can afford a Dumbo Columbus Circle Soho kind of lifestyle. Knock the, stop the cap. I know. I talk to you. I deal with you. I know. You don't want an Outback Applebee's TJI Friday's lifestyle. You don't want a Macy's J.C. Penney's lifestyle. You barely want to shop at Nordstrom. You want Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus. No heat, no judgment. But the problem is your sexual marketplace value, you don't have enough on your car. You don't have enough of a limit. So just like you didn't want to sell in your 18 to 25 years, neither do these guys. Here's what's going to happen. If you are a woman, 35 plus, and you want a man that's... Uh, on the same lifestyle level, you're gonna to have to share it. You're gonna to have to share him. Because, why? Because you didn't get him when you should have. That's just the bottom line. You should have got him between the ages of 18 and 25. But you, whatever you, whatever the reasons were, you chose not to marry in your prime. So if you're over 35 and you want a man in this category, you're going to have to share it. And that's the problem. It's not as though that women can't find men in this category, top 10%, top 15%, top 20% men. It's not that these men don't exist. It's not that they can't find them. They want these men and they want these men to be monogamously, one-on-one -on -one committed to them. And these men are not going to do it. They're simply not going to do it. Why? Because they don't have to, not with you. If they're going to commit monogamously, they're going to commit to somebody who can deliver them their own children. They're going to commit to somebody who's still in their prime. If his sexual marketplace value is here and your sexual marketplace value is here, you're going to have to share him because he's higher. Mate matching. 
I don't, and it doesn't matter what your degree is and what your PhD. I'm a PhD. All that does not matter. It matters the fact that you are mismatched mate value. If a man's mate value is here and you are over 35, your mate value only goes down every year. Fertility being one of them. So it's not as though men are getting revenge or anything like that. It's just they don't have to. Why pay full price for something that is on sale at another place? Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue. They carry great name brands, Chanel, Tom Ford, um, Saint Laurent. But sometimes they run sales to where you can get a, a gift card or this or that. But even Tom Ford from time to time will mark stuff down. And if you can go get something at Tom Ford, if you can go get a shirt at Sex Fifth Avenue, it's Tom Ford, and go to the Tom Ford Boutique, and one is 15% off, you're gonna go where it costs less, especially with the same item. Ladies, you're worth less. Even though you feel like you're worth more because you're older, you're more mature, you're worth less because you're not in your sexual marketplace prime. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if you're over 35, as a woman, and you wanna date men that are around your age, you're gonna to have to share him. That's the problem. That's what you hear all, this, all these women talk about. Can you be loyal? Can you be faithful? No, they don't have to. You just need to decide how many women you're going to share with. If you're a smart woman, in my opinion, you need to decide how many women you're going to share with. It has to at least be two. Well, I'm not saying at least two. At least one. At least one. You're going to have to share with at least one. And here's the problem. Women are hot about this concept. And I sat there and I wondered, why are we seeing all these 35-year-old, 40-year-old women who I think are attractive, who are educated, who got their shit together? I, I see them, but when I date them, I'm like, I see why you're single. I understand why you're single. You prioritized your career and you are, are you're, you're not as easy to get along with as women who are younger. And, you're, and what you deliver, the, the pressure that happens when you deal with a woman around 35 is immense because they want to get married quickly and they want to have children. You're not going to rush a man who is a uh, higher value than you down the aisle to have children with a woman who's older. You misplayed your hand. And this is what you're going to have to deal with. So here's the rubber meets the road. Let me talk to you over here because what you're starting to see, more women of value you're starting to see more women who are making money settling for men who are younger than them. How many times, every day you're starting to see a woman who's 49 or 50 year old getting caught with a 25 year old. Why? Because you have a rock, because that's approximately what your value is. You can't get caught with a 50 year old man. He's with a 25 year old. Now, my question is why are women who had their glory day, your heyday, you had your time where you were getting flued out and getting into VIP and this and that. Why do you expect a man now who had to become who he was, you just had to maintain your value. Why do you expect, see, women don't want fairness. They want all of it. They wanted to have that glory day and then they want to get a high value man they want monogamy, strict monogamy. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the ladies over here. Ladies, why do you want why are you demanding that a man is monogamous to you when you're in your 30s? Because I, I, when I sit back and I look at them, I'm like, I, I get why they're upset, but why are they upset because they can't get a man? Or are they upset because the man they want have options? That's the problem. And it's the man that you want have options and you know they have options and you know damn well that they're going to exercise them are upset with the fact that they're going to have to share a man. And let me tell you another reason why you're going to have to share a man. There are more women than men. In black America, if every marrying age black man were to get married, there would still be 2.6 million black women left. And see, that number gets thrown off. And that's why now this whole swirling and divesting movement. But ladies, there are more females of every race than males. So. Brad, Lee, Amen, and Enrique aren't going to solve the problem either. And ladies, the higher you go up, I'm not going to even say socioeconomically, I'm going to say the higher you go up in lifestyle. Lifestyle! The higher you go up in lifestyle, 
the more it becomes like a pyramid. The more you want, the harder it's going to be to get it. So, lifestyle on the track, man. The more you want, you want a Honda Accord, you don't want a Honda Accord lifestyle. You don't want a, 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 a teacher in high school lifestyle. You don't want that. Ladies, you need to be honest with yourself. And that's what this conversation is for. Ladies, if you want a foreign sedan lifestyle, a lifestyle where a man is making at least $75,000, let's talk about black people, okay? Only 9% of black women earn $75,000 or more. Yeah, Kevin, but that's just all women. What about Generation X? Generation X women make more. Yes, Generation X women make more, but you also have lower sexual marketplace value. You want to know how I can tell? Straight off the bat, weight. Your weight throws you massively out. So if you are a high lifestyle woman in Generation X, but you are out of shape, boom. And I'm working on putting together something to explain it very simply, to give a woman an approximation, just an approximation of what her actual s and is. Because this is why women, so many women resist rankings and don't like to be ranked and all this other kind of stuff. Because rankings make women feel a certain kind of way. They're like, well, I don't want to be ranked because then it's real. You, can't, you can walk around with nine or 10 energy but when you are average at best. That is what it is. They, um, I think about how my parents raised me. So my dad raised me to think a man is supposed to do X, Y, and Z. My mom raised me a certain way. So growing up, I was conflicted in what a true union is. But the way I was able to see it, I looked back at my grandparents' relationships. And both grandfathers had two families, possibly a third family with one of my grandfathers. So I say that... <laughs> I'm keeping it, I'm being honest. I say that to say what we're taught is not what it really is, you know, and I see that for my life as well. See, so I think it's possible to share a man. And see, women today will hear that and say women back then were fools and this, not, but women back then were happy. True. They're happy and, because that, their happiness was, see, the problem today is women were told that a man is supposed to make you happy. No, we're not your entertainment. Your family and your connections are supposed to make you happy. That's, That's what true. women in the East understand. They, they, you get a man, and from that man, you get his, his, his family, and you get your kids. And from that, that's what makes you happy and fulfills you. The, try, and that's what that other lady said. You were taught we're supposed to give you all of us and everything, and we can't. We can't keep you occupied, and that's a, so. Now, do men need to go out and make other families? I'm not going to go that far. Right. That happened, but I'm not going to go that far. But, but I will say that I think that women need to understand that it is not a man's job to keep you entertained. All right. Uh, thank you, Instagram. Appreciate you guys tomorrow. Instagram only. Oh, focus groups, focus groups. Hold on, wait. Focus groups, focus groups, focus groups. Focus groups. Uh, every city I go to, I'm going to do a men and women's focus group. There will be in person. You have to attend in person um, because that's the value. The men, I'm actually going to record the men because I want women to see the men that you guys say don't exist. And I'm checking the backgrounds. I'm not, you ain't going to just come play a goddamn character in front of me. I'm, a, I'm checking your shit. You say you so and so, I'm checking your shit. Because when I put you up, I'm going to put you up and say, well, here's, here's a, a captain. A, 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 a contractor or this or that, that, that. This is what they're saying. The ladies, on the other hand, um, I will give the women the option to remain private and confidential. Um, if you want to be public, that's up to you. It will be over your shoulder, not directly there, because it's about the conversation. And here's my, my goal, to actually get out in the field where the workers are and hear what's going on. I don't know every goddamn thing. And when I speak, I speak on behalf of the men and the women I talk to. So I got to get out in the lab and do the work. When I'm in the lab, if you're selected, we'll sit down, talk, interact, 
uh, there won't be any drinking and all that because I want to get you clear headed. And the ultimate point is to move the conversation along uh, and to also demonstrate a point. If I can drop in, if I can get on a freaking plane and go to a city and sit down and talk to men and women who should be able to find one another, maybe it'll give the matchmakers or I don't know, these people and these people should be able to find one another. And, then, and they got to be able to hear what each other's having to say. So I'm going to tell you right now, fellas, ask MTR. Man, there are some beautiful, accomplished women who have applied to these focus groups. Boy, boy, boy. 